Looking to transform your family game nights? At Perfectly Pick Games, we specialize in family games that bring everyone closer. Our games aren't just fun. Kids and teens will learn how to take turns, develop basic strategy skills, and understand the thrill of winning and grace of losing. With our exclusive gift of games, you can give months of gaming excitement to your family. Choose a three-month or six-month gift, and we'll deliver hand-picked family games to your doorstep every month. And here's the best part. Right now, you can use the promo code GOLDENMOJO and receive 20% off your selected plan. Don't miss out on this exclusive offer. Use promo code GOLDENMOJO and save 20% today at Perfectly Picked Games. Hello, all you paranormal freaks. It's the last Saturday of the month, and you know what that means. The veil is at its thinnest. So if you're brave enough, all of you hitchers and drifters, load up for a ride with Golden Jay and Logan as they traverse to the other side. Welcome back, all you hitchers and drifters, to the United States of Paranormal, your weekly road trip through all things cryptid, creepy, and paranormal. And I nailed it in one take. (laughs) This round of applause. <laughs> How about that? There we go. That's right, folks. It's Logan. So that only means one thing, that it is another interview of one of Two Sops cast. And this week it is my co-host, Golden J. It is I, Golden J. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Apparently, Are you ready to get interrogated? I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. Apparently, uh, my my oldest granddaughter listens to uh, to Sop every Wednesday morning on the ride from uh, um, the house to uh, the daycare. That's got to be a daddy thing. It is. It's got to be daddy driving Absolutely the car. Absolutely, yeah. her dad. And he told me today that she sits back here and goes, "It is I, Golden Jay." <laughs> And then she goes, I do the, I, and then she goes, and J Dub. <laughs> I do the same thing, so I can't even argue with her there. It's hard not to. It's it's pretty exciting stuff right there. But also, I also sing the say the intro right along with Maddie doing the intro. It's all burnt into my brain. It's so pretty crazy, isn't it? <laughs> well, hey, listen, uh, I think we can officially announce this. Uh, we did reach 100,000 downloads, and I want to thank all of our listeners for getting us there. It is pretty amazing. I mean, unbelievable. 100,000. Congratulations to you. Congratulations to the Rocker Chick and J-Dub and uh, Maddie and Bose, all part. Oh, and Alicia. And Alicia. All <laughs> part of this giant uh, uh, wagon wheel with um, uh jack sparrow on top running around so <laughs> it's crazy to think that uh that many people have listened to us that many times i know right a bunch of those are me just yeah. saying they've stuck or they've stuck around through uh bucket jokes and you know the old ass cough jokes oh and, you know God. the tried and true ones man <laughs> and still people talk about the anal tuberculosis to this day man yeah and like it's a very real thing it sounds something made up but it's not no, made up. It's real. It's real. And let's it's hope you there. never catch it. Oh, good Lord. You put me down. <laughs> I'll take a bullet. That's fine. Absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, 100,000, man. That's a uh, insert uh, little fucking celebrating horn right there. That... I want some, uh, I want some confetti. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to have to fucking clean up confetti. <laughs> That's what your girls need. Some of those sticks that you pull and they just shoot confetti nah, everywhere. Listen, I'm that guy. Like, if you think you're pulling one on over me, like you, my kid's birthday or Christmas, and you're like, look, I got them uh, 100 uh, glitter markers or this <laughs> sticker set or that. And I'm like, that's cool. It can stay right here. And when they come over to see you, they can play with it. Yeah, but, I mean, they don't come over to my house. They're too far away. So I'll still leave it there. I'll be like, when they roll back around here next time, <laughs> they'll have stickers waiting for them. Or let's one of your grandkids play with stickers. There you go. That, 
when I sold the Jetta, it had stickers in the window oh. from one of my kids that I just could not get off. And I told the dude that bought it, I was just like, they're there, man. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'll tell you. Good luck. Good have luck fun. with that. I didn't even vacuum that bitch when I sold it. I I don't have an extension cord to get a shot back out there. I was just like, it's, it is how it is, man. Absolutely. Take it or leave it. Absolutely. All right, buddy. I think I'm ready. You ready to go? All right. Yeah. Let me pull up my question. All righty, righty. Here. Oh man, here we go. How far can just Logan dig into Golden J and find out well, I, new things that you don't know about me? Well, I think like I think I think these questions are pretty decent to get information because you're not on the Golden Eighties or uh or any of the other podcasts talking about like spooky stuff so it's true some spooky questions in true here and whatnot so i think i got it all right i changed up a few of the questions for you just to keep it fair to the rocker chick because she got blindsided by all of them <laughs> so it's only fair that you guys don't know everything coming your way that's probably a wise choice yeah all right so we got question number one how many we got 21 this time around too you might have 22 okay okay <laughs> So your dad was a wrestler. Yes. So I've got an important question for you. Okay. The crowd's roaring. Mm -hmm. The lights hit the entrance to the runway. The announcer's yelling a name. What name is he yelling? And what song are you coming out to? And why? Oh, for me or for what was his song? No, for you. Oh, wow. That's good. I want, a, I want your stage name and I want your song and I want why. Well, I don't think that I'm going to veer off of Golden J. I mean, come on. I mean, the, I mean, no, you got to sell it. Yeah. I mean, like, that's your, that's your brand. I mean, D, I mean, I could even be DJ Golden Jazzy J or something like that, but you might get sued there with <laughs> DJ Jazzy J in there. <laughs> what would my song be? I mean, I, I think we would just uh, fall into, um, uh, a little beautiful by Flicker Stick. Nice. You know, just the chorus. You know, just, just you're so beautiful. That's you know, it goes with the golden thing pretty well. Now, it, my thing is, is technically you're a you would be a legacy technically, as in wrestling speak, because yep. your father was a wrestler. Absolutely. So he was Sergeant Bobby Golden. Yes, correct. So would you have military attire tied into your thing or are you going you going solo? You're going your own thing. I, I definitely go in my own thing. Um uh it's interesting because at that time when he did that, um we don't have the focus of the military like we do today. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, at that time you're looking uh, you know, the eighties, um, you know, when we weren't in conflicts or, you know, or war, I guess we should just say war. We probably in more conflicts and stuff like that. We just didn't know about, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, so focal point on military wasn't the, the same as it is today where, um, we have a lot of the people that you see on the streets now that have done military, um, de deployments and stuff like that. So I think that if to really go out and do something like that today would be disrespectful to the military uh, and those guys and those men and women who are are over there fighting for our country and a lot of the ones that are losing their lives in the midst of that. So I definitely I think it's a valid point. I think I definitely stay away from that right at, you know at this time. Um, That's fair. Uh, you know his song um walking down was walking on a thin line by Huey Lewis in the news nice. and that was one of the first musical edits that i ever did was for him because he wanted the intro and then he wanted to skip like the first verse and first chorus and then come in with the second verse and in second chorus as his walk in so one of my first ever editing jobs was two tape decks recording this thing and getting it just right. So nice. That'll take you back a minute. Oh man, I can imagine <laughs> filming all that. I think you're right with the whole military persona thing because you don't really see that in modern wrestling anymore. I think that kind of left with like Sergeant Slaughter and stuff right. back in the day. So that kind of ties into like what you do nowadays too. Is like you 
one of your first editing jobs was for your dad, and now you edit constantly. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> hey, I did think of another one. You know, I could do a little. Um, uh, what? Well, uh, oh, uh, okay. Forget it. I can't think of it. Was it Harry Styles? Golden, golden. Oh, fuck. And then there's another sure, one. Another one. I'm sure there's tons of songs with golden <laughs> in it. There is just so many. Uh, I'm gonna live like golden. Like a golden, I'm telling you, man. There's a there, there's oh, something. there's tons. You've got a good, you got a good last name for marketing. You could have figured something <laughs> <That's> out, right? <laughs> uh, you know, it is what it is. You know what? I, it, it doesn't really like tie into anything, but for some reason, you seeing that just reminded me. Maybe it's just because golden's a color, but like I, uh, I turned on. I've got a uh, serious radio in the new car. Uh huh. And I forgot to connect my phone when I got in, so I was like, "Oh, music!" And I just hit, uh, I hit '90s, and it played uh, mm, 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 by uh, the Crash Test Dummies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like, uh, I've got there's this action figure break de- review that I listen to at the end of every week. I've got a guy that I've been watching for years on YouTube that just. Uh, breaks down what's all coming out in the action figure world and stuff. And he does this thing where he's talking about colors. If something's listed as bright white, he goes bright white, <laughs> like from that song. And he talks about it. And that fucking song kicked on. I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, no, here? man. It's, it uh... just hit me weird. It's not a song that you ever hear pop up on the radio, especially nowadays. No, it was uh, Canadian Canada Canada's one hit wonder is all basically what it was. They get yeah. they get one popular song from one artist um, every two to three years. So and that was, was, <laughs> that was really hey 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 now hey now <laughs> fucking G- Justin Bieber went strong for a long time, dog, and he's Canadian. So is is Bieber Canadian? I didn't know that he is Canadian. I, yeah, I don't know if they claim him anymore. Probably not. But I, I think he's I like to Bieber. I, I don't know what everybody's problem is. I like the guy. I like, I don't, I'm not gonna lie, I like some of his music. I just charged up my old iPod for the first time in like a decade, uh, just to like to listen to what I had on there. And there's a Bieber song on there, right. I ain't even gonna lie. More Spice I mean, Girls than Bieber, but yeah. you know, <laughs> talent, talent's talent, man. <laughs> true that, that's what true it that. is. Absolutely, all right. So, question number two, okay. Was there any place in your childhood home or a place that you frequented? that scared you as a kid no not really i didn't have uh like the mindset of like scary spaces in my house or or anything like that uh i think one i don't think it really dawned on me about paranormal until um i don't know god i want to say uh junior high um, when, when the little Egypt thing really sprouted up and everybody was talking about, uh, uh, the things that they were, that they were supposedly going on or out there around Halloween, you know, in October and, and all that. And, um, there was sacrifices and, you know, the claiming of sacrifices allegedly or whatever. Yeah. And I remember being on the school bus and we were talking about it with one of the girls that I, that I rode on there with, and she was talking about it and we were all like really enthralled with what she was, what she was saying. And I remember coming home and I remember saying something to my dad because, you know, he grew up in Bremen and in that area. And I said something to him and he goes, well, you've been there. And I was like, I'd been there. And he goes, do you remember that time? we were driving home from your grandma grandma's house out at lake of the woods and we were driving down this back road and we hit this puddle and the car stalled out and we were stuck out there in the middle of nowhere for a little while while we got the car dried out and was able to get it restarted and i'm like yeah i remember that he goes that was we were right next to little egypt when when that was going on and i was like well see that's spooky i was like oh Really? So I called up this girl and I'm like, I didn't even say it was me. It's like, I've been to Little Egypt. And she's like, what the fuck? Who is this? Because, <laughs> you know, all that shit was going on at that time. And, and I freaked her out a little bit. But as far as like any, I didn't have any places that really scared me or, or made me feel uncomfortable. I mean, 
when I was growing up. How how hard did your dad hit a fucking puddle for it to get up in your car? Well, yeah, fucking... you would you would think uh, you would think that uh, it wouldn't be that bad, but I remember the road, and I don't know. Did you? It's a shit road. It is a, it shit is road. a sh- yeah. shitty road, and it's and it's like this. It's up and down. I mean, it's wavy. So we had gotten a ton of rain, and I remember standing there on the island with the car and just looking down the road, and you could just see like peaks in the road. Everything else was just underwater. So yeah. it was late at night. I think he kind of spun down that road, didn't realize that he was going to, it was going to dive that deep. And I mean, it was, it wasn't just like a mud puddle or something. It was, yeah. you know, it was a washout. Yeah, no, so. they're deep. I, and it was bad then. So I think it's, it's only had have been gotten worse since. <laughs> I haven't been out there in a minute. Uh, uh, I did find out that not only do uh, they have the legends of the actual cemetery, but Back up the road, uh, quite a little bit is a bridge that they say a troll or something something lives underneath. So, at this mu- it comes up so much in Tusop. At some point, you guys are going to have to get some locals in, and you guys are going to have to do an episode about Little Egypt. Oh, absolutely! Just, just you can you can find people in town that I mean, everybody's heard a story or had an experience. Yep. It's just going to have to happen. Yeah, I would spend hours out there with your mother and your aunt. I don't doubt it. And I don't doubt it. I would sit there and I'd be jamming out to a little DAD, uh, a little Disneyland after dark, and listening mm-hmm. to uh, Girl Nation while the I stared at the two of them running through the woods. I was like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> they were having fun. Still trying to. I don't know if they ever found that damn house. To be honest. It has to be there's out no, there somewhere. There's no telling, man. <laughs> if it ever even existed, you know? That's how legends are. That's right. It's a legend. Exactly. Okay. So, well, I mean, I guess it makes sense to, like, I think, like, like being scared of stuff and, like, all that kind of, like, revolves around, like, what your upbringing was like. Like, if you didn't watch a bunch of horror... Well, I know you didn't watch a bunch of horror movies. Right. So if you don't watch a bunch of horror movies or anything like that, you really don't get a whole lot of fuel to the fear fire, right. I guess, right off the bat. I mean, I grew up with my mother, so it was – and I was always watching movies I shouldn't be watching from the hallway. Right, right. So I think fear came for me at a really early age. <laughs> I remember that hallway like it was yesterday. I know exactly oh, I when too. you talk about that. I know exactly where you were setting and how you were peeking around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. I can see it perfectly this day. I can see, I can see the wooden panels on the wall. Yeah. I can like right down there. I can see the entertainment system, that big old window that went into the backyard. Yeah. And yep, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, that, we were talking about it the other day on the other side, talking about the, the fucking L-shaped couch and everything. I can I can see it all up there. Right. It's one of those things to where it's like uh, every now and then I'll have a dream about that area and I'll be that house. I'll be in that house and everything. And then it gets all wonky when I like go to the school out there. And then the school is like in my dreams is always like an amalgam of like every school I've ever fucking been to. So it'll <laughs> look like Atwood on the outside, but on the inside it's Germany. And then the playground is fucking uh mauriceville middle school here in texas and it's just like <laughs> brains are a weird place man absolutely <laughs> um they did uh they did uh, a couple of weeks ago do you remember the atwood store that was there yeah yeah they tore it down that's the one your dad owned that was the one my dad owned yeah man i mean honestly i'm surprised it's lasted this long am, because if too. If it's anything like the fucking sidewalk in Atwood, like that foundation had to be <laughs> fucked. I'm assuming that there was a, it was a, a bad deal because uh, they actually had boarded up the windows uh, like late December and mm-hmm. spray painted it purple. You know that no trespassing purple. So um, I guess there I was prob- overly surprised yeah. when they when I saw the the big old thing chopping it down. Yeah, so. somebody yeah. must have went to bought it and probably had an inspector come out and be like, "This foundation, it's it was a brick building." Yeah, yep. So if that foundation's gone, yeah, the building's gonna have to go, which is a shame because it's been there forever. Oh yeah, yeah, as long as I can remember, and that's been. I mean, I worked in there when I was thirteen years old to pay for my ten speed bicycle so I could roll around. Yeah. But- I don't viewers or listeners, viewers, uh, however you're soaking this up. I don't. I I really can't 
paint Atwood in a small enough picture to get that point across. <laughs> like I talk with, I make jokes with J-Dub all the time. Every time I misspell something or something like that, like give me some credit. I went to Atwood elementary, which they closed down. Right. I literally had like 11 kids in my fourth grade class. I mean, like, uh, like there's like one pony towns. This is like, we had a donkey. Yeah. There was no pony. <laughs> we had one restaurant. It closed down. Yeah, it was a good restaurant. The closest, dude. To, yeah, Doozy's was dope. The after that, the closest thing to a restaurant you had was like there was a cafe that also shut down. Right. That was close to that post office. The closest thing to that, because the convenience store also closed right. down, yep. would be the vending machines outside the feed store where you could get them out and do. And hey, when I came back there as an adult, that vending machine was still there. Absolutely. And it was fucking working. So Absolutely. And that and that hardware store is still there too. Yeah. So it it's just uh it's a tiny town, man. Yep. And the population is tiny. Uh there's no much more to say about it. It's a cute little town, I guess, kind of. <laughs> it, yeah, it's not a bad little town. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. So you had no place that really freaked you out until you got a little bit older yeah. and everything, which makes sense because then you got, like I said, you got spread around. You started hearing stories and got to you a little bit. Yep, that that's exactly it. So... What was your family like? Oh, uh, my family was, uh, I mean, my mom was a, was a school teacher, you know, uh, she was part-time. She was a part-time teacher. She was an art teacher. So she was teaching up at LaVille for years and years. And, uh, okay, so not yet. She didn't teach at your school. No, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, you know, of course I went to Triton, but she taught at LaVille until I think, uh, I want to say somewhere around, I want to say 14, when I was 14 or 15 and she ended up getting the job with, uh, in Jimtown at Jimtown school thing. And, um, I remember how happy she was to have a full time teaching uh, art teaching job because, you know, she kind of bounced around. She never really had her own space at LaVille. She used somebody else's classroom and, mm -hmm. you know, just all this kind of stuff. And Jimtown actually built her, her own classroom off the, off the, one of the corners of the building. And so she was able to come in and say, this is what I want and how I want it set up. And, um, you know, that was really, really cool for her. And, uh, you know, I remember sitting there wondering why she's crying, but it was just that crying of, of happiness that she got into something she wanted to get into. Um, of course, you know, we talked about my dad my dad was, um, my dad was an interesting character. I mean, I get all of his entertainment wants from him, you know, the limelight, you know, he was a, pro, he was a pro wrestler, uh, as his hobby. And he did it for my entire life or his, you know, the, the, he was alive when he did it for, how do I put that? I don't even know. He, he, yeah, it, that's, that's tricky. He did it for his entire life that, as long as your life was around. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> um, you know, he, uh. He had worked uh, some of the original WWE stuff when it was all still kind of based out of Newfoundland, what he told me. Um, you know, partied with Captain Lou Albano, you know, that, that kind of stuff. But he got out of it uh, relatively early and just basically ran the local circuits. He ran his own. He ran his own shows for quite a while. But, you know, that's his uh, that's a Superman cape. So. By day, he uh, spent a lot of time as a TV repairman when I was real young, back when you actually fucking repaired TVs. Yes, when TVs were wide. Yeah, and they had tubes in the back, and you could, you yeah. know, fix that shit. Unlike now, where you just, uh, oh, TV's out, throw it in the fucking dumpster, let's go to Walmart and get a new one. Yeah. Something a little bit fair. bigger. Um, what else did he do? He worked for uh, 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 a laundromat the guy that owned the laundromat, he did a lot of maintenance and stuff for him. And he owned the store. He did own the store for quite a few years. He also know he worked in security too, for a little while. He did. He did one of the local uh, factories. He was a security guy. So, uh, um, 
you know, that was a little, that was in our estranged years. So I don't really know a shit ton about that. Um, he, uh, uh, of course, you know, he left my mom and for another woman. And of course that, that woman was not always faithful to him either. Yeah. So that's ironic. Isn't yeah. It? Yeah. You know, what is it? The word, if, if you run across a woman is willing to cheat with you on your wife, she's willing to cheat on you with somebody else. Yeah. And that's for sure. She proved that point, you know, um, and uh, of course, you know, he died of cancer when I was, uh, 17 years old. So what, so what, how old were you when him and your mom split? I was 13. And that was the funny, that was the funny thing about it because I was 13 years old. His new girlfriend slash what new wife was 13 years older than me. And he was 13 years older than she was. What the hell? It was weird. Increments of 13. It was very, very weird. I don't even. That's an unlucky number too. I must have been lucky number 13. Of course, you know, I have a sister. Um, yeah. You know, it's just, you know, it's just a sister. It was a sister, brother, sister relationship. So, I mean, that's, that's well, pretty oh, much. No, you got, you got to, you got to elaborate on that because like, listen, brother, sister relationships come in multiple different <laughs> colors. <laughs> there, uh, there wasn't really, I mean, she did her thing. I did my thing. There really wasn't a lot of, uh, what's the age difference there? Uh, four and a half years, four and a half years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the okay. funny. That's the funny running joke because she catches up to be four years younger, or yeah, five years older than me for a very short period of time, or younger than me, you know. And then it's back down to four and a half. So it's it's always a kind of a battle to be like, well, you're getting old. She's like, you'll always be older than I am. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm because uh, my I've got I'm trying to think of the age difference between Mojo and both her brothers. Uh, I think that you're looking at, um, possibly five years, I think. That'd be for Sky? No, that'd be for Gunner. For Gunner. That's right. Yeah. Cause they were both, uh, they were both human beings by the time she rolled around (laughs) walking, talking and doing stuff (laughs) and everything. God love that little girl. But, uh, she was like, oh. We're having another baby. Okay, cool. Yeah, she was my first exposure to a baby. Because I I was the youngest in my family. And then by the time I was coherent, Gunner was basically like coming up to like being like right. a human being too. Because I don't remember Gunner as a baby right. at all. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, me and my sister are so close in age because she's technically, a, she's an 80s baby, but by like, a fucking hair <laughs> because she's a, she's born in December right. in 1989. I was born in 91. So we're a lot closer than it actually sounds. And I know I, oh, we didn't, we didn't fucking like each other until we we're almost adults. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, that was one of the first, uh, uh, paying jobs I ever had was babysitting your baby sister. There you go. Yeah. That yeah. take you back. That'll take you back a long, long way. Yeah, no, that's for sure. So your you, your only sibling you have is your sister. Yeah, uh, I had some stepbrothers, uh, of course, that came with the uh, the step oh, monster, gotcha. and uh, and I haven't uh, I haven't seen them since. Uh, oh, I mean, you know, like I said, uh, it got to the point where we would go to visit my dad or whatever, and. You could tell the importance, uh, you know, the pecking order there. And it was like, I don't need to come around to this anymore. So that's we fair. Quit go- we quit going over and he never called. So, I mean, it was like five or six years until, until, you know, she left him and he realized that uh, he kind of left his own actual children by the wayside and he reached out. And then, of course, you know. It was just a, a just a matter of um, a month or so after even that that he found out he was sick. So, and that That's, was a quick. That didn't last. Uh, I think that was three months. 
Uh, if you uh, don't mind me asking, what kind of cancer was it? He had a he had a melanoma cancer. Um, okay. You know, once again, we go back to the showmanship. He was always outside tanning, you know, always outside, you know, making sure that he was glowing. So when he when he did wrestle, he, you know, he had. Uh, unfortunately, I've got his body, so it's you know he was a he was a chunky guy. Um, he was very muscular, but he was he was a little chunky. But you know, he still ran out there. He didn't care. He'd run out there, no shirt, you know, wear his tights and all that stuff. Yeah. But he always made sure that he was you know a tan, a tanned and you know wanted to be looking good when he was out there. And yeah, um, he actually had a spot on his upper, sh- upper shoulder, right in here. And he went and had it removed, and they were like, "Yeah, it's uh, it's cancerous." Um, they said they got it all, but obviously they didn't. So it was a melanoma cancer, and he, so it spread. He never went back to had it rechecked. He never had anything done, and and then he was working for uh, the Quick Clean Sales people there in in uh, Warsaw, and he was moving a um, washer washer or dryer, whichever it was. And when he picked it up, he his he hurt his back, and it was it was so bad they took him in. Uh, the cancer had eaten so bad at him; it had actually started to eat the bone. And when he lifted that, it just exploded his back. Oh, so Jesus. they were able to, you know, fix him up enough where he could walk around, but they couldn't do anything with the cancer because it had spread throughout his entire body like that. So that's why I say it was so quick. You know, they found yeah, out no, and it- like mid-December and was gone by uh, early February. And it's just like doctors nowadays are really thorough about that shit. But back back then, it just, uh, you know, it was it unfortunately like, I don't want to say cancer was new because it wasn't really no. new, but it wasn't just, they didn't know as much as they knew. And like on, your dad sound like he worked a lot of different like otter jobs. Right, right. So like there's no telling what his insurance game was like. And like a lot of guys back then just, fucking shrugged off pain we're men we're manly men yeah which is something that just really fucked a multiple generations because like there's a lot of people that could have lived a lot longer if they're like you know what this hurts maybe i should go have somebody <laughs> look at it listen man i am the worst I, I can't stand on a pedestal and and preach about it but um you know it doesn't hurt to go get checked out you know or i i can't throw a stone at that because uh i have not had a like an actual like checkup checkup in years and i have my first one in forever coming up next month right on so there's no telling what they're gonna <sighs> you know you, we all we we fear the worst uh, i did the same thing um uh because of my high blood pressure i needed to go in and and get checked out and and uh i went to uh, the doctor that i know and really liked and and, you know, he walked me through everything and we talked about everything and he, and I did, I feared the worst going in. I thought I told, I even told, uh, Bobby when I went, I was like, well, I'll see you at the hospital later. And she just looked at me kind of funny. I said, there's no way they're going to let me out of this office. There's got to be a million things wrong with me. And, uh, he checked me out and he's like, okay, everything sounds good. We just need to get this under control, this high blood pressure. And of course, then I turned 50 and the first thing out of his mouth was, you know, it's that time. Yeah, I got to put a finger up there, sir. I checked the oil. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, he, and he looked at me and smiled. And he goes, we can do it with blood work now. And I'm like, yep. Sweet. Woo. So I just uh, waited just long enough to be able to dodge <laughs> that bullet. But, uh, you know, he took my blood work and uh, I went in to uh, do all of the the rundown of what he, what he had found. And, and he told me everything, you know, everything was fine. Everything looked good. Even my... Even my sugar, he said my sugar was fine, which really blows my mind for as much Mountain Dew as I consume. Yeah. And uh, it was it was so funny because we had this long talk. And then he told me he was retiring, and that was my last appointment with him. And I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do now? And he's like, well, you can, you know, he gave me some options or whatever. But we got to talking, and this is the guy that I've had a relationship with outside of, of his uh, – uh, of him being my doctor, I would see him every day and we would talk football. We would talk family. We would talk all kinds of really cool stuff. And I got up to walk out of his office and he walked, this is, he walked over and gave me a hug. You know, here's your doctor that, you know, you don't even think of that's how it works. That's, but uh, That's usually a red flag when your doctor fucking hugs you. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I felt good about it. I mean, it's like, you know, you had that relationship with him prior to just, you know, going in there and him being your doctor. And I, I miss him. I miss him a lot. I miss seeing him every day and, and, and chatting with him because he was a really cool guy. And I still haven't found a new doctor yet. So I need to get on that. j Dub's going to kick yeah. my ass because. Yeah, she told you me. need to absolutely get yeah. on it. Well, it's, I, it's I need to because I'm going to have to regulate my blood pressure medicine because, you know, I'm going to run out of my my script before too long so well, yeah which you know you could always cut back on the mountain dews too it's possible could, man i saw i dropped could, it completely good good i yeah uh i uh it was it's almost a year ago now uh the first time i'd been in a hospital for a while is uh i had my first like adult uh panic attack and it was after a night of drinking and uh i we had a family for or we had a friend of us that was going through cancer and everything and it was uh the, that night she was like leaving that was the last time we we're gonna see her before she went up to maine because she has such a rare cancer that they oh, wow. flew her out there to deal with it and like uh i've lost friends before and everything and i guess like the drinking and that all like culminated and i hit the next day i had a panic attack and i've never had like a full-blown panic attack so like i don't know what's happening to me right i'm sh i'm shaking i feel cold i'm tripping uh long story short guys logan fucking hit the the panic button and uh, an ambulance came took me to the hospital and well the first thing is first is like I, I haven't been to the doctor in literally years uh and i'm sitting on the couch and the paramedics checking me out and he was like have you fallen recently and i was like no why and he was talking to the other one he was like his his collarbone is not shaped right on this side. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Uh, and then like, I, I sit at that hospital for hours. I mean, I got there before noon. I didn't leave that bitch until four in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were like, uh, the doctor looked at, they took some x-rays and stuff. And the doctor's like, listen, heart's great, which is good because my grandpa has a bad thumb thumb. Right. So he was like, heart's great. Blood pressure's great. Uh, at some point you, uh, you fractured your collarbone. He was like, that should have hurt a lot. You should have went to somebody for that. He's like, but it's healed now. It's healed weird. Uh, he's like, you got this tendon is torn and this muscle is torn. And I was just, and I was like, ah, well, I was like, at this point in time, uh, I uh, woke up and I felt like somebody like punched me over here. And every time I raised my arm, it looked like a shoestring was going over my rib cage from my armpit. Oh. And he was like, yeah, that's your intercoastal muscle. You tore that. And I was like, oh, good to know. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, he was like, so yeah, he's like, he, he's like, you don't, you don't go to doctors very often, do you? And I was like, no. And he was like, yeah, he's like, it's basically a grab bag of bullshit in there. <laughs> and he's like, so I can't wait till I deal with these people that are supposed to do me like a thorough checkup mm -hmm. because I am just hot garbage soup of a human being and that's because i just don't go right i get it from my dad i just shrug it off and i'm like it'll be fine it'll be all right rub some dirt on it <laughs> but kayla got me to get on this thing to where i can go to the doctor and everything so no well, you know like i said I, I i can't stand up here on a soapbox and tell you to go i mean i did because uh it was presented to me that your heart could explode at any given point and <laughs> yeah. you know, like all right i probably ought to you know i got grandkids now i want to watch them grow up and so uh, I was very good about it. And now I'm just, I'm at that point where I got to find somebody new and I just haven't made that final choice of who I want to get a hold of yet. But uh, I got a couple in the running that I'm going to attempt to get a hold of here and see if I can get an appointment. Cause I just need them to regulate the, the meds. That's all. Yeah. They're going to tell you to stop drinking so much Mountain Dew. That's what they're going to tell you. So if I pick the one, she's going to be like, tell me a joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so let's see i think we kind of know the answer but was was actually what what was paranormal ever a subject in your household at all growing up no 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 paranormal religion uh none of that stuff I mean, it's funny to go back and listen to the rocker chick talk about that you know it's the same thing in my house we didn't have all right quick story so we were a church going family when I was very young and, um, there was, there was a gentleman who went to the church that I was very fond of, I guess was the best. I mean, I, I, I really liked this guy. He was, he was fun. He was entertaining. He was, you know, a down to earth kind of guy. And, uh, you know, you could talk to him about anything. 
And I remember um, he had actually made a, a specialty Bible for my dad that had like uh, tabs for each of the different uh, chapters in it, you know, Corinthians or I don't even know all the fucking <laughs> sorry, sorry neither do I. <laughs> but you neither know, do I. had a list of them on there and I thought it was the coolest thing. And I was really, really, I was, I was relatively young and uh, I just was like, Hey, would you make one of those for me too? And my mom and dad were like, Oh, you can't ask that. You can't, you shouldn't have asked him that. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And he was like, Nope, be thrilled too. So he brought me this Bible a couple of weeks later, each of the tabs were in there. Uh, my name was written in gold lettering on the outside of it. And he had actually written a, uh, a little message on the inside of it to me. And, you know, I cherished this thing and, you know, uh, my friendship with him was, was amazing. And somewhere down the road, uh, not very much longer after that, he, um, he committed suicide. Oh, geez. And, my whole life right then paused and again, remember I'm, I'm still relatively young, maybe 11, 10, somewhere in there. And I started making, I started asking questions because here was a guy who was so giving up himself to God and to the people of, of the, uh, the church that we were going to. And he unlived himself. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. And you're not a single fucking person could ever explain it to me. And at that time, and I was like, okay. Um, then other things started happening in the church. You know, the, this guy was fucking this guy's wife and, and oh, this yeah. guy was doing this and, you know, and it became such a giant open door of, of, um, uh, hypocrites. You know, on Sunday morning, you know, all our lives are grand and great. And this is all the right stuff that we do. And as soon as they walked out that door, it, it meant nothing. And as far as organized religion, I've never stepped back into another church. That's fair. That's that's wild. That uh, was, So was it, do you think the religion thing was more your dad's thing and that's why you're going when you're younger or i i think so i think he uh i think uh he felt part of a group that went that that's what he that's what they did you know every sunday morning they went to church so um you know we did that for for a lot, uh, quite a few years you know he played softball for the for the church league or for, for that church and you know all kinds of different stuff like that but I couldn't, I couldn't go back. It wasn't, it wasn't for me ever again. And so I quit going. And so when you lose that religion section of your life, you don't really zone in on the paranormal side of your life either. And what, you know, what else is out there? So I didn't have a lot of that growing up and I was still young enough. I didn't understand. Oh, fuck. I think it was just here recently, recently till I even looked into like the, what the Holy Spirit is and all that, you know, I had a long conversation with Colton a couple months ago about that. You know, I'm not even sure I understood even all that to this day, but. That kind of ties into our next question. Cause I was going to ask you, like, do you remember the first time you had to deal with death and how it impacted you? I, uh, I can go back to even farther than that. The first, uh, impact or first memory of death that I remember was my aunt Dean who, my grandma would take us to see every week, uh, you know, cause it was, she lived down in Bluffton. She was in a nursing home and, and, uh, you know, that was kind of that first, you know, this was a, this was a thing. We had a, a schedule that we went by and when, you know, we went on this certain day, we drove down there, we visited with her, you know, visited with my grandma's sisters and brothers and, and all that shit. And, you know, that was part of the routine. And when, she passed away, you know, it pretty much jumbles up your entire routine because we weren't going down as much and seeing everybody as much. But, um, I still remember cause it was at Christmas time and I don't know whether I still cringe at this or not, but, uh, I remember I was so little and when she died and I just made a comment, it's like, that's a heck of a Christmas present, huh? Oh, geez. And, and everybody was like, uh, you just ought to shut up. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to, I'm trying to feel part of the, part of the whole thing, but you know, 
Yeah, the the Jeez. adults didn't necessarily care for my <laughs> <laughs> my condolences. <clears throat> I don't know, man. Whatever. <laughs> That's bonkers. <laughs> oh, that was trippy. I just uh, I, like it's so far. Like it's just it's a crazy thing about like uh, we talk. You just you briefly spoke about the man uh, taking his own life, unfortunately. But that's been uh, we've done two out of two interviews here. There's been people affected by suicide, right? And it just just goes to just show you the statistics there and how very real uh, threat, uh, depression, and stuff like that. Really oh, is. absolutely, absolutely. And in you know, in this week's episode, we kind of discussed it early on mm-hmm. in the show, and uh, I know that uh, the the quote unquote banter ran long. Uh, I, I do believe it. the actual story starts about 27, 28 minutes into the episode, but we covered some shit that is very, very real in the opening. Yeah. So, uh, episode, uh, 111 is very, very, um, I guess I want to say near and dear to me because, you know, uh, depression is a thing and I, I, I'll never know. I'll never know why that guy did what he did. And, you know, you and me have a family, a family member who went that way too, that we'll never know why exactly. Um, you know, answers are answers are something that we definitely are looking, looking for, but we'll never, we'll probably will never have in those two things. So, um, if you, if anybody ever says that, you know, they don't, they do not suffer from some sort of depression, they're a liar because I think everybody, everybody does, especially in today's world. Yeah. It comes for everybody eventually, but like some people have to deal with it day in and day right. out. And a lot of the times it's people that you fucking don't expect it from. Like with your case, it was a man that was, uh, heavily into religion that was, uh, more than happy to do things for other people. Like you said, he, he, he made you that Bible and went the extra mile with it. Like that's not something that you would have expected him to do. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and then there's some people that you can kind of see the writing on the wall and get like a vibe from him. But like I said, it comes for everybody and it comes for everybody at different speeds and different angles right. because somebody can seem just fine. I know that people like uh, with, uh, case in point, like we had Chester from uh, Lincoln Park. Right. Uh, people say his family and everything said hours before all that went down, he was just playing with his kids, having a great time. Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, was at a convention right before it, having a great time with fans. And it just sometimes when it comes at somebody full barrel, it's out of nowhere and they feel like they've got no other option right? but to end it. And, uh, it really upsets me when people, uh, say things like, uh, this person was selfish or this person, this and that, because you don't know what it's like to be in their shoe and where they're coming from. They're probably thinking they're doing the world a favor. Are they right? No, but like, you don't, don't victim blame the people for it right? because you don't know what's going on there. If first it's get that bad for somebody it's it's got to be an intense it's i i couldn't even imagine well i mean you know i i get hit with minor bits of it you know but i know how to i know how to deal with it i just need to for me when 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 those moments hit and they hit from time to time it's not it's not a long lasting thing um you know you kind of get in that mode and you just you know where you're at and for me i can i can regulate that and say i need to shut down I need to shut down for a little bit and just recalculate myself and get myself, uh, you know, back going again. Um, mine is more about, you know, you, when you run across things that you didn't, uh, didn't succeed in, you know, the bands and, the, and, you know, the internet radio station and, you know, the, the podcasting world is tough, man. I mean, we're this is 112 episodes of the united states paranormal you know uh, not to mention the other 200 uh, episodes of different other podcasts that i've done and you look at the numbers and you're like what am i doing wrong yeah you know 
we we have great listeners for Tusop. We have great listeners who listen to the other pods too, but you want to make more and you know, and then you get to fighting with yourself over that kind of stuff. So a lot of times I'll shut down. Uh, you know, just stop, take some time to think and work it out and but knowing that you're kind of in that area and you have to be very careful with it um is something i think is is a is um an area where it's an it's to your advantage if you know you're there and yeah. you know so you don't make a wrong dec- decision but uh, me for me personally i mean i got a i got great people around me i got tons of people i could ever talk to if i if i when i need to um you know i don't know about uh the the other people i don't know about chester i don't know why you know why what was you know what was so pressing or i don't know why he didn't have somebody right there he could talk to i mean you know i wasn't in that situation i don't know but it's good to have a good support system and um so i think that when you get an email uh from a listener who who's discussing that i think it's important to reach back out immediately and and uh you know kind of talk about that and i haven't heard from him in in a couple of weeks i actually need to email him back i I've, I've been so wrapped up in my own stuff that i haven't had a chance i was thinking about him today after listening yeah. to the episode it's like man i really need to reach back out see how he's doing see how things are going with him and it's important to have somebody you can just kind of blow steam off on if you need to absolutely and if you uh, listeners, if you don't have somebody that you feel like you can offload that to when you're in a dark place, uh, you can call or text 988 and there are trained professionals and they are there and they are more than happy to talk to you whenever you need them. I have dealt with a lot of people that said they're scared that people on that other line are going to judge them. That's not what they're there for. They're trained professionals and they want to help you keep on existing. Yep. So absolutely, like you, and nowadays you don't even have to call; you can text. Oh, so nice! There is a lot of options. If you're too scared to talk to somebody on the phone, they can they can talk to you via text, and that that is their job. That is the life that they set they signed up for because they want to help people. So there's nothing to be embarrassed about. There's always somebody somewhere that can help you through it. Absolutely. All right, man. What else you got for me? Come on, let's All keep right, it, let's, let's keep see. it rolling. Let's see what we got. <laughs> Can All you right, get me uh, the happy question? <laughs> yeah, this is what happened. This question, that's what that question gets you, because that's what happened with uh, the rocker chick yeah. too. And then it goes from that to like everyone in elementary school and high school eventually was asked, "What did they want to be when they grew up? Do you remember what you wanted to be?" Oh, uh, well, you know, early on. Early on, I wanted to be a wrestler like my dad. You know, that's that was kind of like, uh, you know, the dream. You know, I'm going to be a wrestler. He never, ever, ever wanted that for me because he knew, um, he knew he loved it, but he knew how much pain it caused <laughs> and how hard it was to make it. So he never wanted that for me. So I think by the time I really had a grasp on uh, wanting to know what I wanted to do with myself, it was I wanted to be a rock star, man. I wanted to be a musician out on tour you know, doing that kind of stuff. So I think, you know, I started playing when I was about, uh, God, what was that? About 13, 14 years old. I mean, that's late in nowadays age when, you know, Mm. you have superstars that are like nine years old playing drums on fucking TikTok or some shit like that. So, yeah. Yeah, But for when you were that age, like if you wanted to learn something, you had to read a book or go find somebody that was teaching. Yeah. Nowadays, a kid can pop on YouTube and watch, anybody teach them so it was, it's different different shades uh i think it pisses difficulty. me off more now than it did back then or maybe i don't know but it, nowadays you can like you just said you can jump on there uh you can make a youtube video and ellen degeneres can find you and make you a superstar justin bieber yeah um yeah yeah back back in those days you had to play in the clubs, go tour all of the, the fucking dive bars, you know, leave your family behind, give up everything, eat nothing but fucking earthworms and uh, drink goat's milk because you stole it from the fucking farm down the road. And uh, now you can just get famous by running a fucking TikTok. Yeah, it's definitely it is 112% easier to bust into most forms of career as far as 
music industry, acting, et cetera, et cetera. Because now back in the day, uh, to record a demo, you had to rent studio time mm-hmm. or know somebody that had extremely expensive fucking equipment and pay them to do it. Yep. Nowadays, everybody has all of that at the palm of their hand, basically. All of the- and <laughs> on top of that, they have access to thousands upon millions of viewers. Yep. So. Absolutely. It, uh, Absolutely. Uh I have done that. I have paid studio time. I have went to studios and recorded, recorded on a uh, you know an eight track uh, reel to reel. To you want to go back? I've also recorded on cassettes up to uh, what we done you know a couple years ago, where it's all digital, or what, even when I'm working with a new artist right now in my studio. So, um, you know, I've done it all. I, I ran the gauntlet. Uh, I think what really irks me is is that I wish I would know then what I know now about yeah. certain things. So um, I'm sure that question's coming up, so I'll save that. But uh... <laughs> it's fair. I'm time traveling or something at some point, ain't I? Uh, what is something you find yourself thinking about prominently? Prominently? Like what's like a reoccurring something that you find your brain like strolling back to? Uh, I mean, like right now, you're talking about right now. Yeah, just something like that. It's like consistently pops uh, back in your brain. It's, it's it's all about how to get more viewers on these podcasts. That is where my brain keeps going, and how to how to make Golden Mojo Entertainment LLC a success successful company. And yeah. what can we do to to kind of keep going in that direction? You know, how do we build this beyond podcasting? You know, do we build a production company? And what would we need to do that? Uh, you know, uh, the ultimate goal is to have an event center, you know, the place where not only you can hold weddings, but you can hold all kinds of other things inside of this thing. And you build it in the mindset of, um you know, an amphitheater type place or whatever. And, you know, this is, this is all the things that roll around my brain. I spend way too much time by myself. So I have a lot of things that bounce around in my brain. That's why, that's why you get random IMs from me when it's like, Hey, uh, and you're like, uh, yeah, I'm working on that. You know, you know, just stuff like that. But that's why Logan tries not to spend time with himself alone. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have much choice. (laughs) Um, that mindset of, uh, so that's not a mindset that a lot of people, uh, deal with, but that mindset of thinking how to grow a brand slash social media is like, once it is cranked on, it does not stop and it does not go away. Yeah. And it is, it is a blessing and a curse because you like with you guys, you've met so many people that you would have never met. Right. But on the other side of it, it comes with its own strife. It comes with uh, losing shows, losing uh, people that you're working with. Uh, having I, Something I deal with is mediating myself. Uh, I'll see somebody write a shitty comment or something on my Power Ranger page or something like that. And I have to not think like Logan. I have to think like the brand that I am now, I have to right. think of myself as new frontier. So I just delete the shitty comment <laughs> or I say something like, well, if, uh, if you're having an issue with this, maybe this would be more your speed. Right. And it is, it is taxing. And I know why people like Lindsay Lohan and all of them fucking snap eventually. <laughs> so Yeah. Because I mean, think about it. I mean, I know that you haven't, uh, you're having really good, great success with your new frontier and your, and your ranger reach out and all that. Um, you know, we've had some really, really good success with the United States Paranormal, but all in all, I mean, we're still on a small scale compared to your Lindsay Lohan's oh, or oh, uh, absolutely. So, I mean, it's just insane to think about the beating that they would take. You know, over, you know, we have a couple bad comments that just kind of get underneath our skin, and and uh, you're like, ah, oh, fuck you, you know. But you know, once again, it's it's keyboard courage. And yeah. it's no different for them either. I mean, if they just stop to think that it's just somebody who 
uh, you know, they took five seconds to listen to the show and, and then, you know, made an opinion about it and then decided to go on social media or rate and review and voice their opinion on something they listened to for, you know, 10 minutes. Yeah, it's insane. It's like people when these actors break uh and like have to go to rehab or some unfortunately like we talked about earlier take their lives and everybody's like oh i don't get it they're rich they're famous they have everything they're like yeah but you got to think about it from their end like these people okay this movie that you watched an hour and 45 minutes of and then completely shit on or Mm -hmm. or uh entertainment weekly shit on for thousands of million people to see they just spent half a year making that and it just instantly destroyed uh, or talk shit on or like when you go and if you have like, – if you go get plastic surgery and it gets botched, nobody fucking knows because you're nobody. But right. they do it. <laughs> you know, they got everybody out there the fucking microscope. Yeah. Of course a motherfucker's going to snap. Yeah. You don't so, you don't understand? Okay. Let's put you in the limelight for, for 30 days and you tell me how you do where – everybody is watching every single move you make now i'm not saying that's for us i mean i'm not that's not what i'm getting at but you know we still are have to behave with what some of the things we say some of the things we do you know we've been called out on a couple things on the on paranormal shows Uh, i went back and fixed episodes because somebody wrote in and said hey i don't think that was right what you did um and i have stood behind some of the things that we you know were emailed about when in different things so i mean it's all in how you want to take it and how you want to deal with it so yeah it's it's a definitely it's it's a it's like working in a minefield it's like working in a minefield <laughs> that you choose that you choose to walk in every fucking day it's true it's true we are very fortunate though i i, I say we're on a small scale but uh, we are very fortunate to have some really great listeners who do write into us and talk to us and and uh you know we talked about it many times how uh you know i feel like we've made new friends along the way that we probably would have never ever met so absolutely not even just the viewers like there's people that i now have a relationship with i never would have uh without like ha- with colton as somebody mm-hmm. that i like to talk to uh frankie vegas J Dub. these are all people i would have never met if it wasn't for um me just liking to create right exactly you know if it, if, it, if it wasn't something you put together, this wouldn't have happened. I would have met these people. It's just there's, – there's a lot of good, but there's also – like I said, it's a double-edged sword. It goes there's, right there's back to and Ashley and Alicia. Yeah. So you take, you take it and get it. Entertainment business is a tricky business it no is. matter what form you're in, from plays to radio to podcasting to whatever else. Absolutely. So let's see. Okay, we got another one for you. Okay. Let's say you end up at the pearly gates. St. Peter's there. He's checking you in, and he says, hey, before we get you in here and all settled, you can ask one question, and we'll tell you what's up. What would you want to (laughs) know? One question for St. Peter. Yep. Oh, wow. I mean, it's it's anything, man. It's anything. It's, It's anything. Um. Um. Wow. Well, for starters, uh, thanks for thinking I'm actually going to make it to the pearly gates. <laughs> Listen, if the pearly gates are out there and uh, you don't you don't make the cut, then there's not a lot of hope out there for a lot of us. So I hope is fu- I hope that I hope you do. Uh, oh man, I I I just I think uh, I think I would ask him. I mean, if anything goes, I would be like, "What is the secret of women? What did we do wrong?" I don't know. That's about all I got, really. <laughs> Man, now, now, see that you're asking. Uh, now, we're saying in this scenario, the pearly gates is real. So, therefore, everything tied to said pearly gates is real. Okay. Uh, I'm not a religious person. I know some religious stuff. So, if you think the pearly gates are real, that goes back to Adam and Eve being real, right? Which is, uh, so right there. Then and there, you you already got your question technically answered <laughs> because because I mean you got to think she was uh Eve got punished for the whole apple situation uh-huh. uh she was also made out of Adam's rib uh-huh. so she's already got that over her head 
I just there's a lot going on there. You know, childbirth, uh, all the things that women have to deal with. We kind of we kind of got that coming. <laughs> I don't know what I would ask him. To be honest, I don't have any big, grand, uh, um, wants to know. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Rocker Chick was the same way, kind of. Yeah. And like, man, I've got so many that I would just be fucked. I'd be like, all right, you just deal with the next twelve people in line. Uh, I'm gonna me... try to I'm gonna try to think of which one's more important to me. <laughs> well, okay. Just give me one of them that you would ask. Just uh, give me an uh, example. Man, uh I would it's see and a lot of it's nothing like that's like super important, but it's just like questions that like have bugged me my whole life. That knowing that I'll probably never know, right? Uh, like, what, like, uh, what happened to DB Cooper? Like, I would want to know. <laughs> I mean, I just—it's so interesting. I'd want to know. Or like, what happened to Amelia Earnhardt? Where'd she go? What happened? Just like, there's just like, and it's stupid shit. Like, mind you, like, I'm up there. I've found out heaven's real. I'm getting in, and I'm just like. And he's going to be like, he's going to tell me, he's going to be like, well, this happened, this happened, this happened. And he's going to be like, you really blew it, man. Cause she's in there. You could have just fucking asked her. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. Son of a bitch. Well, it's like that, uh, like that plane that went down, uh, that huge jetliner that went down. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Uh, that was news like years ago that it was like the, what, the biggest one to ever go down. It just went missing. Remember? Oh, man. Uh, I, I can't remember it. Uh, Oh, it, I, I, my brain keeps saying Asianic flight, but that's lost <laughs> of the TV show. <laughs> but there was that huge jetliner that went, uh, like they, they, they watched the black box. They're like, it was supposed to go in this way. It went this way. And then it, they picked up the radio for a second and disappeared and they never found the black box, never found the wreckage like shit like that. Or, right. or maybe I'd be like, yo dog, Bermuda triangle. What the fuck's up with that? Probably in better language because yeah. I don't think he would appreciate that. <laughs> I'm gonna vote that Logan standing at the pearly gates is be is still gonna go. What the fuck's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, at this point, if they're already letting me up there, they don't have a problem with my language. Yeah, right, so, right, 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 right. I'm like, listen, you got my name in there. There's got to be notes on that. You know what to expect. <laughs> but there's just there's so many things that like I know as a human being, I will probably never know the answer to. Like. Amelia Earhart right now they're they're having some like breaks in the case maybe yep. they find where her airplane went down but unless they find a body they're not gonna be able to tell me if she went down with it or right 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 uh db cooper i'm i don't think we're ever gonna get the thing for that you i need, mean i'd even you need to watch the leverage there's an episode of leverage uh that uh that actually uh touches on that touches on well the whole episode's about D, basically db cooper so uh my really interesting uh, the the idea that the writer had for this and, and what happened so one of the things i wrote the call guys about that uh upset me is their buddy episode they didn't to two of my favorite buddy movies ever they didn't mention i know colton's a big fan of one of them one of them is fanboys and that's about star wars fans and uh -huh. a friendship and whatnot but the other one is without a paddle oh that has Matthew Lillard, yeah. uh, Seth Green, Seth Green, and uh, oh man, I forget him. It's the dude that's married to Christian Bale, and I love him. He's a great actor, but I cannot think of his name right now. And that whole story ties into DB Cooper, and it's interested me ever since I was a kid. And I watched that, and I just like this dude was on an airplane, and then he wasn't. Yeah, he had all this money, and he just parachuted out and nobody ever saw him again and as far as i know he's out he out there he lived his life fantastically or he died somewhere in a mountain range and like it just drives something about my brain just does not let it go <laughs> man <laughs> sounds to me like the investigation should begin yeah i don't know that's it's trippy but like i like literally i'd probably be in that line bribing people be like listen dog ask him this question for me when i get in there <laughs> when i get in there you tell me yeah and then i'll know well we'll rig this system but yeah <laughs> You're rigging the pearly gates <laughs> ruh ro raggy there's just so much like crazy shit out there that's happened that we've got no fucking explanation towards that's true that's true um that i would just like to know
like aliens alone would be worth a good pearly gates question but like yo dog aliens and he'd be like fuck a lot of aliens out there man they'd be like look in the line fucker you see like fucking 17 extraterrestrials back there ask one of them they'd be like oh that's fair that's fair it, you would shit if he fucking hand you a pair of sunglasses and go put these on oh god <laughs> just wear these just try i was on. just saying there's there's a lot of good questions to, to ask homeboy for sure i just wouldn't be able to pick one that's funny yeah well, so let's see uh, what we got here. Question nine. Oh, we're only on what? question nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we knew this would happen when I we know. sat down. Mm, yeah, uh, we better try to. You, we better yeah. probably better try to move on with these questions a little bit quicker. Okay, uh, what would you say your happy place is? Uh, home. I think at home. I think for me, it's home. Um, you know, it can be in this studio or. Or even out in in the in the the big studio, but just being home with Bobby and and just in Ozzy, you know, this is definitely a happy place. Um, it's fair. I wake up and this is where I want to stay. I don't want to go to work. I don't want to have to go somewhere else. I'd love to stay right here and do this. But yeah, um, yeah, this is definitely my happy place. There we go. Fast answer. Fast Good answer. <laughs> okay, what do you think the existence for spirits that linger in this realm is like? Uh, wow. Because I, I'm going to have to just go with a simple word and it's uh, miserable. I don't know why I think that. I mean, I was, I was listening back to rocker chicks answer and, you know, she kind of uh, summed it up quite well, you know, but, uh, I would say it'd be miserable. I, I can't imagine just kind of being in that space and, and you don't get to go up and ask St. Peter that question of life or whatever, you know, that's your, you know, what happened to D.B. Cooper? Yep. <laughs> you know, you're just kind of stuck here. Um, uh, it falls back to one of my favorite TV shows, which is Angel. You know, can you see the puppet from there? I think it's out of, out of the shot. Yeah, but, he's out of the shot. Um, we wrote a song called uh, um, Echo on the Guilt 4 album. Of Cinetap Row, which you can stream at all of your favorite uh, uh, streaming sites. That is Guilt Four G I L T and the number four. Look for Cinetap Row. But I, we wrote a song called Echo, uh, which actually revolves around that Angel episode that had uh, Summer in it, and I can't think of Summer's last name, uh, but where she was a ballerina, and every day she just did the same thing did the same thing over and over again for the the guy that had her trapped there and she looked at it looked at him and says i don't exist i just echo and that's how i feel with the spirits you know they i don't think they exist they just basically echo most of them anyway and i think the ones that uh that don't echo which the ones that you get a lot of the um <clears throat> responses out of you know the doors opening or chairs rocking and stuff like that those are probably not really good spirits to be around anyway yeah i think they're probably if i think when they've get enough juice to start moving shit is probably they've been around long enough to where they're nice and pissed yeah and that's what i think they're finally getting enough juice to actually do things i think they're long past uh happy spirits at that point exactly that's that's why i think they're miserable that is a fair answer all right so Let's get a little generic here. All right. If you go back in time and talk to yourself, yep. what's something you would want to say to you? Uh, well, then we. And what age are we talking here? Uh, well, we're talking to like an early, early, you know, 11, 12, 13, right around that age. Uh, if I could go, you, this is like if you went back in time, the time machine we talked about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. I would go back and express to myself the importance of getting into, uh, at that time, you could call it jingles. And making that work uh, over, uh, you know, a certain amount of time and, and maybe give yourself a little bit of idea of what to do instead of going for, I want to be a rock star who makes albums, gets a record contract and, you know, tours the world because now, you know, kind of where all that stands with the record companies, maybe not now since everybody kind of went their own direction, but, uh, you know, record companies are kind of dead in the water. But yeah, um, to be able to go back and tell yourself to just maneuver your focus a little bit and write to 
the Burger King ads or the, uh, you know, the McDonald's ads or whatever, like, whatever it was at that time, you know, st- you know, what do they, what do they uh, steer into the slide or slide in whatever it is? I don't know. Steer into the slide, I guess, but, um, you know, go in that direction and maybe you'll have more success in, in the long run with things uh, along that way. Well, yeah, because a good fucking jingle can live just as long as a fucking as queen or kiss or any of their songs absolutely because i i'm fucking 32 years old and i tell you what i can fucking verbatim sing you the nestle wonderball theme song no problem (laughs) lives up there permanently and there's ads and advertisement uh like projects that will live up there rent free for the rest of forever with me Oh, absolutely. And, and the, the thing is, is those people who are writing those, uh, you know, those 30 second jingles with a tagline of, uh, you know, ba da ba bum ba, you know, whatever, yeah. the, whatever it is, they're making millions and millions of dollars because absolutely. the royalties and every time those show, every time those play, every time anybody uses them somewhere, you're getting paid as a writer and, you know, I wish I'd known a lot of these things earlier of how things work because a lot of things were available. We just never knew about it because we didn't have this grand thing called the internet where we could learn all these things. But, you know, you're piecing it together by talking to, you know, this guy over here who, you know, had a, took a piece of this and that guy took a piece of that and you're trying to puzzle it all together. Yeah. Yeah. You should go back in time and smack little Jeremy in the head and be like, write a fucking Christmas song. That's right. Right. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, here, all you have to- this is what it's called. And this is Christmas. Yeah, it's like if if you're you're a rock star kid, you don't understand. You're gonna have to keep writing good albums and good albums to stay relevant. You write one fucking good Christmas song, you cash in checks for the yeah. rest of forever. And that's the thing: you'd be cash in checks. You don't get the fame, uh, but you get that money. You get that money, and then you can do what you want to do. Absolutely correct. Just like think of all the schmuck, like like think about the guy that made the goofy ass Alvin and the Chipmunk song <laughs> back in the day, and and look what that launched. He wrote one song of with goofy voices. I mean, like all I want's a hula hoop, and then that dude's got cartoons, uh-huh. movies, God knows what else, and all off that. So it's and nobody can name that guy. Nobody can be like yep. it was this dude. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. But his family's set. For the rest of forever. It, the interesting thing is, is that, uh, uh, do you ever hear of an artist called BJ Thomas? No. He was very popular in the eighties. He was a, he was a country singer. Uh, I'm sure that if you, I can't think of what is, what is one of his biggest songs was, but, um, he wrote like the Folgers coffee theme. Oh, uh, best part of waking, waking up, up. Yeah. It's Folgers in your cup. Exactly. <laughs> Jingle. But right there. Nobody ever knew that he wrote it. He just yeah. he just wrote it, and you know he's collecting royalties on it. And then he went on with his country country career, and and he had a couple of really big hits. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, I don't know that. Once again, you know the Folger song, but you don't know B.J. Thomas. Oh, exactly. You know uh, the Pillsbury Doughboy, uh huh. The guy that created the green, the original Green Lantern, created the Pillsbury Doughboy. <laughs> How crazy is that shit? Yeah, that's fucking like nobody will ever know. They'll be like, "Hey, he made Green Lantern." And he'd be like, "Yeah, but you know what else I made that people know just as much about? You know that little guy you poke in the stomach and he goes, woohoo? That's me, bitch. <laughs> All right, here I'm getting Pillsbury money and yeah, DC yeah, money. That's right. right. Do you see the stacks? You can't see all the stacks? I'll show you later. You'd be like, I'll separate it right here. This big stack, <laughs> Doughboy. This stack, Green Lantern. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I love that. I love that because it's true. Crazy man. Oh, it's so good. Money, 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 money. Yeah, marketing, man. Marketing is marketing's like AC, man. It's always going to be there. Yep. So it is. It double down on it. Absolutely, and I think that's another thing I probably would have would have focused myself in is is uh, you know maybe follow up up some marketing stuff and and you know learn about it. Maybe even go to college for that. Maybe if it's just an Ivy Tech cut thing where you just go and take some classes or whatever, but you know, steer yourself in that direction that that would be better for you in the long run. At 50 years old, you're still standing here going, what am I going to do with my life? Yeah, that's fair. It sucks. Yeah. yeah. 
All right, so let's go with how did you meet your co-host and what did you think about them when you first met them? <laughs> uh, well, as you know, I have known the rocker chick for a long, long, long time. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to think back when I actually physically first met her, met her. Um, uh, the time, the time frame is skewed, but you know, we went to school together. We knew each other. I actually kind of like, I think I, yeah, well, I don't, I think I know I dated her best friend for, for a while. Um, I remember, uh, one of the guys I was running around with was, had a big crush on, on Bobby and was trying to get her to go out with him and like a double date between the four of us. But you know, that has never happened, but she wasn't into him. He was, a, he was a little weird, and, <laughs> but he was awesome. We had a good time together, but, um, yeah. So, I mean, I've known her a long time. I was there. We talked about the boy and she talked about the boyfriend who died in the car wreck, you know, uh, I was there at the funeral, you know, um, I remember talking to her, uh, didn't, I mean, at that point I didn't really know her that well. I mean, yeah. um, it wasn't until I'm trying to, like I said, I can't, my timeline's skewed as far as when he passed away compared to when I was going out with, the, with her friend and, and all that. But I remember, um, yeah, it was like my, like my sophomore year uh out of nowhere here she came you know like i said i've known her but all of a sudden it was like hey what's going on you know we start talking and and uh passing you know that yeah the original texting when we were passing notes yeah <laughs> in between classes hey man i did notes <laughs> i did notes too you gotta remember i didn't first of all i was a late bloomer as far as phones go i didn't have my first texting phone so i lived with you and radio oh, really? shack literally radio shack literally made me i had a flip phone that just did calls yep. and radio shack is like motherfucker you have to sell phones yeah you, take this yeah you, know, you <laughs> need to know how to make them work yeah so but i remember um and I want to put this on the record. <laughs> I remember, um, I remember going uh, to the to the basketball game she talked about because I was playing in the band. I was playing in the high school band, um, and uh, I remember me and Eric were there, and she come up and she kind of sat down, and we just started, you know, talking, and and uh, she asked me if I was going to the because back then you they would have school dances right after the basketball games because you basically walk out of the. Uh, uh, gymnasium and you could take one turn and you were into the cafeteria where they always had the DJ set up and all that. She asked if I was going. I said, uh, I said, yeah, I said, it, you know, my mom's supposed to be here to pick me up at a set set of time. She's like, okay. So we go into the dance together. And of course, you know, we dance, we dance, uh, together. I'm not really much of a fast dancer, but, uh, definitely slow dance with her. And to this day, and she will argue it with me. Um, she kissed my neck two or three times <laughs> and then she kissed me or I kissed her. I don't remember exactly who initiated the actual first kiss, but uh, to this day, she claimed she never, ever, ever kissed my neck. So yeah, I just imagined it. Whatever, yeah. whatever. Aunt Bobby is out there <laughs> skipping class and kissing boys on the neck. Yep. Ain't nobody buying what she's selling. I know it. It's a, it's a done deal, no, no. but uh, yeah, um, that's, that's the rocker chick. That's how I met her. And we've been together. That was God. Like I said, my, that was 35, six years ago. So we've been together for a long time. J-Dub's a whole different uh, scenario. Um, uh, you know, I've, I've only known her a couple years now. Um, she took over as my boss for the boss that I'd had for several years. And um, I remember, you know, you kind of met her on the, uh, real quick. And then she come and spend a, a little bit of time out at the, the warehouse that I was at where it was just the three of us. So it was me and J dub and, and, uh, my former boss. And that was when I really got a chance to kind of, um, talk to her and, and try to try to understand her personality and, and how, you know, how she was and, you know, it, am I going to be able to relate to her? You know, with the former boss, I could relate um, somewhat, you know, the former boss used to come see me play all the time. And, you know, we'd done things outside of work. Um, 
but with J-Dub, I didn't know. So it was a really good opportunity for me to, uh, to talk to her. But I remember I looked at her and I said, um, I want to see your tattoos. And she got this really look, really weird look in her face. And she goes, my tattoos. I go, you got sleeves, right? And she goes, how did you know that? And I said, well, the other day when we talked for a couple of minutes, I just seen them peek out from around your cuff. And she, you know, at that point when she was kind of first coming in, she was trying to keep all those covered, you know, uh, you know, kind of that whole, um, still kind of getting the learning curve of the place and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I think that kind of broke the, broke the ice a little bit as far as that goes, you know, it's like, oh, all right. Yeah, cool. Let's talk some tattoos. Let's talk, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and of course, you know, um, I was telling her about the paranormal podcast and she was telling me, oh, you should go watch my episode on a haunting. And, uh, you know, that and Dale bringing, you know, to do the show. And, and then when Alicia left, uh, you know, it was a no brainer to bring her and the rocker chick in. So, I mean, if she wanted to do it, you know, there's that, that whole thing with the employee, employer, you know, boss, boss, yeah, type thing I worried about, but, you know, we try to keep it, you know, we do the podcast together and we have fun together and all that stuff. But when we're at work, we're at work, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. There's a long skinny of all that. So, yeah, I remember when, uh, Jada first got there because before you even knew the co stuff, you're like, I got a new boss, uh, likes hot sauce. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that? yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, what would you recommend? I was like, yep. I got you here. Yeah. And then months later, you're like, hey, go watch this episode. And I was like, man, I wonder if this lady lives in, still lives in that area. And you're like, she's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Crazy how it all kind of works together and where we're at now, isn't it? Yeah. It's fucking bonkers. So are you ready for the lightning round, bitch? Uh, I know. I'm not going to say Cheetos. Uh, well, I mixed up the lightning round question, so you're shit out of luck. Damn it. <laughs> if, you, All right. if you think you got a lock on this, you don't. I don't have a lock, but I just know I wasn't going to say Cheetos. All right. You ready? The rules are say what is the first thing that pops in your mind. You might regret it later like the rocker chick regrets Cheetos, but that's her. <laughs> listen, that's her soul telling her what she really likes. I know, right? Oh. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with a good Cheeto, man. No, Cheetos are great. I love Cheetos. All right, you ready? I think so. Finish these sentences. Okay. My favorite band is? Flicker Stick. My favorite season is? Uh, uh, summer. There you go. I would like to travel to? Our, uh, <laughs> 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 um, uh, uh, I, it's on the tip of my tongue. Um. What's the place where they do all the drugs and it's legal? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, a lot of places, man. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know, man. I'd love to go see Paris. I really would. There you go. Paris. Fucking. All right. Paris, we go. Okay. Bartender, I would like a. Oh, fucking tequila sunrise, baby. There you go. My favorite show is. Dude, that's a tough one, but I'm going to go with uh, Castle. Castle. I'd like to snack on. Lay's Stacks Cheddar. Okay, Lay's Stacks, man. All right, yeah. gotcha. That I tried one. Lay's. I'm pretty sure somebody at Lay's sold their soul to the devil for them to be able to nail the weird flavors they do like yearly. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I uh, recently I bought the uh, Lay's Rudy Tooty Fresh and Fruity IHOP chips. Oh, God. And it is strawberry syrup pancakes with bacon. Oh, God. And it's, that's what it tastes like, man. It's It's... They've done it in the past with their – hey, it's good. It's weird when you open it and it smells like pancakes and strawberries. It's strange, but it's good. <laughs> and they've done stuff in the past like biscuits and gravy where it tastes just like biscuits yeah. and gravy. And then like Taco Supreme where you can taste the lettuce. Oh. Somebody at Lay's sold their soul at a crossroad to be able to <laughs> fucking make – because I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Um, we, we actually submitted two or three times for that, but uh... – uh, I can't remember what we submitted, but they were good ideas, I thought. But, but well, man, they've done everything. Chicken yeah. and waffles, just like tons of crazy shit. Yeah. And it always tastes like what it says it tastes like. I don't, I don't know. know how. How do you how do you make a powder form of uh I hop plate? Uh, it's gotta be uh yeah, it's a certain ingredient, but you give me the, the little 
Pringles looking can for the stack, the lay stacks, and give me the cheddar ones. Uh fucking yeah, it's an all day thing right there. Yeah. I, I fucking my problem is anytime I buy Pringles, I buy them for a road trip like a dipshit. Uh huh. And then I'm trying to fucking stick my hand uh-huh. in a fucking Pringle tube while I'm driving down the road. So I end up just tilting it up oh, and yeah, I yeah. get fucking crumbs in my eyes. Well, the best thing to do is actually shake it up and make the pieces smaller so you can actually grab them with your mouth when there you, you go. get something. So this is from the guy who drives around a lot. <laughs> there you go. That's fair. My problem is all my favorite snacks are all spicy. So my hands get all fucking shitty. And then I touch the work truck steering wheel and I have to wipe it down afterwards. <laughs> they love you for that, don't they? Yeah, they sure do. Uh, all right. What do you got for me? All right. Are you superstitious? And if so, what are some of your superstitions? Uh, you're a football fan, so I know yeah. you're fucking superstitious. I, I, 100% superstitious. I, I don't have the, like, uh, breaking a mirror. You know, I don't have that superstition. My superstition is uh, come playoff time, I have a specific shirt I need to wear. I have a specific hat I need to wear. Um, you know, just things like that, you know, and, and they change from season to season because last year's lucky shirt is definitely not this year's lucky shirt. So, <laughs> uh, it's, it's crazy, but yeah, we'll do this whole last playoffs. I've had a, a, a hat shirt and a pair of jeans and that's what I wore through all of nice. that. I knew you were going to answer yes to that. Oh yeah. I'm almost superstitious. every football yeah. fan. Superstitious. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any form of media, a book, movie, or TV show, or maybe even an album that you would say left an impact on you that changed your life? Uh, that, that kind of leaves it uh, leaves it wide open, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, a movie, book, or even an album. I mean, I mean, how can you? Oh, I know. I know for me. I know there, there's definitely a few out there that fucking yeah. stuck in my crawl and stayed there. I mean, you know, I uh, I, I guess um, if I went with album, I would have to go with Huey Lewis and the News of Sports album. That's one that, you know, I listened to a lot. And believe it or not, I didn't like it at first. Uh, watching the music video for Harder Rock and Roll, for some weird reason, just disturbed me. When he's at the end and it's like his heart is beating, but you know it's it's just a light pulsing. For some yeah. weird ass reason, that really bothered me, and I was like trying to stay away from it. But then you got into uh, a couple of the other songs on that album, and it's just like wait. And then before you knew it, it was like the whole fucking album was amazing. Uh, Golden Eighties is going to cover that here real soon. That album, so I'm looking forward to that. But um yeah i think if anything made a super impact on me it's either that or the footloose soundtrack i think footloose was kind of that for me that coming of age those songs that really kind of stuck and and uh you know you got the footloose song but then you got we need a hero and you know stuff like that so uh books wise i mean we talked about this once before with that stage fright book it was one of those books that uh that I read when I was really young and enjoyed. Um, I think that would probably make the impact, but uh, as far as a movie, I think an impact movie that negatively impacted me was final destination in that opening <laughs> fucking yeah, log it. truck scene. And I don't, yeah, we try to avoid that, but um, anything else, man, I mean, everything impacts me differently these days, you know, uh, whether I'm listening to an audio book or watching a movie or a TV show, uh, it, uh, it just covers me differently. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. I'm getting to that age where I'm thinking that uh, all my hormones are all messed up, and I'll cry at fucking <laughs> Brooke Williams going home at Tournament of Champions, and and yet uh, you know you're uh, you're not crying at the at some of the more important things in your life that you should have fucking been crying about. <laughs> but, yeah, that's fair. Brooke Williams. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Oh lord. All right. Uh, if you could speak to one person who is not with us anymore, who would it be? Oh, that's easy. That'd be my grandfather on my mom, my mom's dad, an amazing man. Uh, I miss this guy every fucking day since he's been gone and he's been gone since, uh, 1990. Oh, 95, 1995. Um, the, the guy was uh, the most patient man you'd ever meet. He was the most uh, giving man you'd ever meet. 
but when the kind when the time came to be stern he was that old school stern that when he yelled you fucking knew it yeah. and you know one of those deals so but i i very i only seen it twice in my entire life so once was at me and once was not at me and uh you know i prefer <laughs> not to see it either or either or time but just definitely not have it pointed in your direction uh, absolutely you did not want it pointed um there's so many things that uh that i learned i learned late in his life that i needed to really start paying attention to mention to the stories and the things that he told and so i started really kind of sitting down and listening a lot more than i did in my younger days when i was talking to him so but yeah, it'd be definitely my grandfather. I miss that man so much. Sorry, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it is what it is. It's you know, uh, it's who I mean, it's who you felt closer to and who left a bigger impact on absolutely, you. For, absolutely, for sure. Well, fortunately, uh, your dad got to meet him too, so you have to ask him sometime about it and what his uh, what his thoughts on him was. I could, I definitely do that. Uh, me, and my dad here lately when i go over there it usually ends up just being me him and poor kayla is set up with us too everybody else goes to bed me and him are up drinking <laughs> and all, all it all it all it ends up uh, us being here is basically talking about people that have passed right and just learning stuff about each other's people and whatnot and that's that's what it's consistently been this last year and kayla's just sitting there looking at two uh drunk cawthorn boys just fucking rambling on about shit she has no idea because she didn't meet any of these people so. right right uh, definitely done that with your dad. Yeah. <laughs> I love every minute of it. Okay. So uh, on that subject, can you remember the first time you got drunk? Can I remember the first time I got drunk? Uh, I can remember the one that I remember was, uh, um, I was with, uh, the guy who taught me how to play guitar. His parents had a cabin up in Michigan and uh god i was probably uh well he was 16 because he drove so and he was a year so i guess i'm about 15 i don't know that sounds weird because i thought anyway uh we ended up driving going up to uh this cabin in michigan and that's all they did all the way up his mom and dad and their uncle or his uncle would just sit in the back of the van and just sit there and drink southern comfort all the way up Jesus. And uh, so he drove and I rode shotgun. And, and then once we got up there, they had a rule. You were allowed to drink, but once you touched the glass, you weren't allowed to leave the inside of the house. That was the rule. If you, if you want to drink, there you go, but you got to stay right here and you can't move. And, uh, I pretty much spent that whole entire weekend drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On Southern comfort. God. Yeah. That was a good time. Oh, Southern comfort. Oof. Yeah, I was, the, the Freddy's nightmares were a big thing at that point, you know, the TV show. Yeah. And uh, they had a satellite or something up there and they were tuned into like some some uh, marathon of these Freddy's nightmares. And I remember being drunk and being like passing out and then waking up to some fucking weird <laughs> Freddy thing. Oh, Jesus. All night oh. sleep. <laughs> Good Lord. Yeah, there you go. That's what I remember. That earliest what's, one I can remember. What's something you can't live without? uh is that physical or uh, it could be anything it could be a fucking brand of coffee it could be a per it, it's just something like you can't live without it's got to be mountain dew man i i have such a bad bad addiction to mountain dew i know yeah, you're I, shaking your head at me i see it no man i i mean i was right there with you man i was drinking it constantly so i can't i can't shake a finger at you i can i can say that it is possible to kick it i found that out it, but the it, thing is is once you kick it and you're away from it a long time. There is no going back because it does not taste right, right. after being away from it for so long. And that part hurts my soul <laughs> because like I had a flavor that I've been waiting for for years to come back with the original game fuel and it dropped and I took like a sip of it. I was like, I just want to taste it. And er the first taste, I was like, yeah, this tastes right. And then the aftertaste, I was like, oh, God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it was just it was just bad. The aftertaste was awful. And then I've tried like three or four flavors since. Have you tried? A, have you tried the original, the the regular? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just the aftertaste. Like it first hits, and it's like, yeah, that's right. And then the aftertaste that follows it is right. just gnarly. And I'm like, oh god, I can never have it back. I I broke myself. 
I, I keep telling myself I need to just kind of cut back a little bit and just actually drink more water. And I've been trying to, but man, I, I'm such, I, I am such addicted to, to the dude just, that it's just drink more of your Wakanda water. I love my Wakanda water. <laughs> Don't knock it until you try it. I had to, when I did it, I wung myself off by drinking uh, like carbonated, like liquid death, like the carbonated waters, that right. flavor and stuff. And then I got to a point to where uh, my go-to alcoholic drink now is uh, two-turnt tea. And it is a non-carbonated alcoholic tea. Uh-huh. And when I start doing that, like, and I just drink water in the day, now I can't even drink stuff without bu- with bubbles because it just like right. bugs me. So now I don't drink anything carbonated. That's, so, yeah, I think that's the steps. I, I I believe you're you probably got from what I talk to most people who kind of got away from all the carbonated sodas. Uh, yeah, they do, and they do a couple steps down, and then nobody wants to even get anywhere near anything carbonated. Yeah, because once you stop having all those bubbles, you know, like to get all uh, adulty, it's just like your your stomach doesn't have all that compression and stuff from all right. the bubbles anymore. It just feels nicer. And then, <laughs> and then you don't, you, and then you try it after like you drink a, I'll drink a car. I tried drinking a carbonated water like a couple months ago and I was like, my stomach feels off. Right. And then you just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to do it no more. Well, it's like there's people that smoke all the time when they finally kick it. And then they're like, uh, then they're like, all of a sudden they can smell it. Mm-hmm. Like somewhere, and they'll be like, "No, nah, I can't. I, I can't. we get rid of this couch or something like that." You know. <laughs> Our thing was when we quit, uh, you could smell it in cars ahead of you driving down the highway. Yeah, which was always weird, but uh, yeah. All right, what else you got for Mountain me? Dew? Okay, Mountain Dew, baby. Let's bring okay. it on the Dew. There's probably other things like you know. I probably should have said Bobby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what she said was you. <laughs> so but, let's be honest, though. She'd probably say Mountain Dew too. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, she she cut Mountain Dew years and years and years ago. She's a oh, she's part. a Sprite girl now, but uh, uh, I can't drink Sprite. That's the only thing in this world that gives me heartburn really? instantly. Sprite. Yeah. Yeah, she's oh, a yeah. she's a Sprite girl. She kicked the Mountain Dew habit uh, probably about eight years ago. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah, we said this, and maybe maybe it hasn't come out yet, but uh, she truly is my everything. So, oh, but Mountain Dew, but Mountain Dew, <laughs> <laughs> I can't live without Mountain Dew. <laughs> What's something you can't stand? Uh, hypocrites. It's fair. Hypocritical people. I mean, be yourself. But I don't give a fuck if you're. And what you believe in and all that stuff. I don't give two shits on what you believe in. That's what you believe in, and I respect that. Don't be a hypocrite about it. Don't be flying your flag here and then going home and pounding your wanker, you know, on something, yeah. something else. Yeah, no, I completely get that. I've got a buddy of mine that's – I deal with a lot of artists uh-huh. on a day-to-day basis. And I've got a buddy that got on his soapbox the other day. He fucking – he hates when people take his art without his permission. Uh-huh. and and post stuff on it and he went on this big diatribe and i'm all for don't take people's right. work without without at least crediting them he went on this huge diatribe about it and i just like i was like this would be a lot more tolerable to listen to if it wasn't for the fact that i know that you sell t-shirts based off of old super sentai power ranger stuff on your website and i was like dog that's you stealing art <laughs> right yeah you know he's like you can't throw that fucking stone if and you, you live in a glass, glass house. house. <laughs> so it's like, you're sitting here like, this guy took my art. And, and it's like, yeah, but on the hindsight, that guy can't be sued or catch a cease and desist. I was like, a fucking Hasbro gets a fucking whiff of what you're doing. Right, right. They can come at you and be like, all right, you owe us this much money. So uh, let's Absolutely. dial it back a little bit. Yeah, I'm just I'm just tired of hypocrites and, and you know, all the things that, uh, you know, we stand up and preach and and talk about. And you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And then you turn around and you look, but you know, behind the fence and they're doing all the shit that they're telling you not to do. And it's like, you know, it, either stand up and be the person that you are, or just don't fucking say anything, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's weird. My thing is if you're going to judge people about how they're living and you better be living the right way, 127% of the time. Right. Don't come at me sideways about who I love or what I'm doing. Right. Unless you're living exact to the T what you think is supposed to be done. 
Yeah, and I could say that even saying that out loud is probably could put, you know, put that target on my back too. It's like, well, you're hypocritical about this. Well, maybe I am, but call me out and let me know. You know, maybe I don't see it, but um, I don't also stand up on my soapbox and tell you all how to live your life. I want you to go live your life exactly 100% like you want to live it. Yeah, and exactly. enjoy it. Go enjoy it. God damn, enjoy it, please. All right, this is the one question that uh, I gave all of you f- forewarning about. What would your last meal be if you could pick it? Talking death row type deal here. Oh, <laughs> that is true. Uh, you know what, man? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with a 12 ounce sirloin parmesan shrimp. You know, uh, on top of it, you know, like kind of like you get at Applebee's. Oh my god! <laughs> Fucking uh, last meal, no more. It's like Applebee's. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Apple. Well, I mean, just saying, just give me a garlic parm steak, uh, some steamed vegetables. I'm definitely gonna need a uh, killer Chicago dog on the side, and um, some butterscotch pudding. Butterscotch pudding. Those are the, my. Those are some of my favorite things in life, right there. Let's let's talk. Let's break down this Chicago dog that you're getting here. What, what, what are we? What, what's going to be on this? We might like, hurt the big debate over that. We but. might we might we might hurt some feelings here on what you say is on this. Let's uh let's let's, let's hear about the Chicago dog. What's what's on the Chicago dog? Uh, well, what's on the Chicago dog? You got to have a poppy seed bun. You, yeah, you, you break uh, it gotta, down for me. We gotta what? We gotta have an all beef Frank, right? Uh, me personally, give me a Nathan's Frank. Uh, Nathan's I love, good. I love some Nathan's. Um, you know, relish. I, I, I probably wouldn't have the pepper. Uh, no sports peppers for you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not under the spicy, but uh, give me the relish. Give me the, give me the, uh, the pickle. Um, I guess you just go with mustard. I don't know. Do you uh, put mustard on wait, it? Wait, no, wait. You tell me you tell me how you want your hot dog though. <laughs> well, how do you want it? If I'm gonna have it on, on death row, I'm gonna have it with ketchup and mustard. So uh, <laughs> all right, got you. you I kind of think um there goes all the Chicago maybe, fans. Maybe uh pro- I'd probably leave all the ketchup because I don't know the ketchup's gonna blend with the uh uh um crap, the relish and stuff that they put on it as well. But uh um you know, we actually did. Did you hear the story that we went to the Comets game on last Saturday, and here we are, me and Chico are hanging out, and we're in the we're in the period number three, and they run a Portello's commercial or uh, ad up on the big screen, and we're like, that sounds good, and we'll pass one on the way home, and he's like, yes, we will. I said, wonder how late they're open. Oh, they're open till 11. Okay. So we go swinging into Portello's after this hockey game, order up two of their uh, their Chicago dogs, two apiece, and we eat these things at 11.30 at night on the way up from Fort Wayne. I'm telling you, man, they make a great, they make a great how, Chicago dog. How did, how did their Chicago dogs come out? Uh, uh, well, it's kind of brown. Well, motherfucker. <laughs> I didn't have the pepper, so they didn't burn. Um, that's not what you meant, was it? No, not even in the slightest. <laughs> uh, like, just like I said, I can't remember exactly. I know that the the pickle spears were huge on there. Yeah, huge. But as far I mean, it was dark, so I don't know. I can't remember. I think it is just mustard on there. I think. Yeah, so it's it's gotta be poppy. Like you said, poppy seed bun. You got it. Yep. You got your hot dog. I'm not going to be a stickler about the hot dog. Everybody's different. Some people like their mix. Some people like it. The straight beef. It is what it is. You got you got your you got your tomatoes. Oh yeah, I forgot about tomatoes. Yep. You got your tomatoes. You got your relish. You got your sports peppers. You got your pickle spear. You got your mustard. You gotta have the mustard. And then your celery salt. Yeah, yeah, I forgot about uh, celery salt. Yep. And uh, it's just like a. People that haven't been to Chicago don't know, man. Those Chicago people don't like ketchup on fucking yeah. hot dogs. Oh, believe me. I, I heard all about it in there. I hate sweets. So ketchup is already just another one. Because ketchup is too sweet. But, like, I get it with them and the no ketchup because, like, everything they put on a Chicago dog, ketchup really doesn't go – to me personally, ketchup doesn't go great with relish, really. Yeah. The relish and a pickle spear. And you already yeah. got a tomato on there. You really don't need it. I, that's what I was trying to think is, I, I mean, you know, give me a, a, and, a, and just a regular hot dog. If I'm just eating on a regular bun, nothing else. It's usually ketchup and mustard. 
and those are kind of mixed. I'll I'll take it and put ketchup down one side, mustard on the other, and then I'll just take the dog and twist it and let it all kind of mix together. But if you um, want to put ketchup on a corn dog, fucking go ahead. Corn dog's already kind of got that sweet thing going right. on with it, anyways. Right. It's just I don't it has know. any place on a fucking Chicago dog. The best and, the best Chicago dog I ever had to this day is that was that little fucking push cart outside of soldier field after uh two and a half hours of drinking beer on on the field and walking out going man that sounds really good uh the best that was the best chicago dog i've ever had it was absolutely delicious and i couldn't tell you what was on it i just know that i was pissed because i wanted another one there you go i should have gotten two the Chicago dog is right. There is a place uh, in Louisiana called Botsky's that does all sorts of crazy hot dogs, and they have some amazing hot dogs up to that joint. But, like, nothing really beats a Chicago dog. No. I think they nailed it down. I think that's why they get so upset when people fuck with the formula. <laughs> that's true. I get it. Every once so. in a while. I, like I said, I can't remember the last time we made them. I know the last time we did not put ketchup on them because everybody was such an uproar that I said something about ketchup. <laughs> it's all good all right so let's get here uh what's some wisdom you would like to pass down to the listeners um have you heard the new uh what's the new saying what's the new saying hold on uh um something about the day you deserve uh crap now i'm I'm lost out of port you know basically uh get out there and enjoy your life and uh you know, that's what the, I think I know what you're talking about, where it was what Skywalker said. I hope you have the day you deserve. Yeah. Have the day. Yeah. I hope you have the day you deserve. And I think that rolls true. Go out, enjoy, enjoy every day because tomorrow is definitely not promised. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we will make decisions, uh, accordingly, you know, from financial aspects or, you know, timing aspects or whatever, but, don't put off too far what you want to do to go enjoy life, you know, because it will slip away from you. Um, we got into a habit of coming down and seeing you guys in Texas or meeting or whatever, you know, uh, for about three or four years and in, I mean, enjoyed every time we were all together. Um, whether it be, you know, uh, we did a trip to new Orleans or, or just hanging out there and, uh, you know, uh, the Beaumont area and or whatever the case may be. But, you know, we kind of got, kind of got sideswiped and, and didn't get away. And, you know, now here it is another three or four years later, you know, almost five, I think. Yep. Since we've been down there and, uh, you know, it's like, you, sometimes you just got to pump the brakes and say, it's time. Um, you know, we've kind of set this back and, and you, we put it in the rear view and we don't, we shouldn't do that. And you know, you, you stop and you go, all right, the new focus is going to put us in this direction. You set a time, you set a date and boom, yep. you make it happen. And I think it's important because uh, it was always explained to me that if you're going to put it off till next year, then uh, it's never going to happen. Oh, we'll go on yep. vacation next year or, you know, we'll go do that next year or we'll pick that up next year. And before you know it, you know, it's five years later and you didn't do it. So exactly. Enjoy the day, the day that you deserve. So there you go. Yeah. Not to, to, to quote rent. There's no day like today. <laughs> Just <fucking do> it. <laughs> to quote Ben, I live my life one quarter of a mile at a time. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. I think I even fucked that quote up, but I'm yeah. sure I'm sure I'll get an Was email it, from uh, Colton. Fucking, uh, are you t- are you quoting Fast and the Furious? Is that what you were quoting there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, fucking uh, Vin Diesel. Fucking uh, what the fuck was his name in that movie? Dom. Dom. Yeah. Dom. I used to live my life a quarter mile at a time. I live my life. Nothing's more important than family. Yep, family. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. All right, uh, one more. Oh, I've got two more for you. Okay. Uh, what do you want your legacy to look like? Well, I mean, does it get any better than what I what I got now? I don't know. You you're uh, you got a lot more than I think a lot of people do because uh, 
when uh to quote another fucking thing like when it's all dust in the wind homie you're still out there right you know you've got you got your bands you got your radio shows you got your podcasting like you will be heard by people long after both of us are gone i think that's something that's really cool about the unique stuff that we do podcasting and all that stuff that's like that double-edged sword we talked about earlier like one of the positives is we will absolutely outlive ourselves on the airwaves yep it's interesting to, to actually think about that because um you know when we did golden image radio it was uh, a lot of people even told me this you know it was podcasting before podcasting yeah um you know we did have a live stream you could watch us and you could listen to us but the problem was you didn't get to keep it you know once it was once you hit stop it was just over it didn't save it it didn't you, know, you couldn't edit it and put it out somewhere uh fortunately for me i recorded a lot of those episodes on a on a dvd burner so i had a lot of those which you guys got to um but i have spent years combining all of the old eight millimeters uh you know the vhs is all that stuff down to digital and it sets on an external hard drive and that is something that i put together because i didn't have that for my dad when he was gone even though there's stuff out there and and people keep still sending me things uh how west um which you i don't know if you ever listened to uh the show we did on golden image with him um you know he, he wrote a book and the majority of it was about his wrestling career with my dad and he's he, he i am the other day he's like hey look at what i found on some weird ass fucking uh website you know that had a clip about these guys and there's your dad you know wrestling them and i'm like no shit but uh i didn't have that to help me get through kind of the early stages of mourning him being gone um Whereas, you know, and, and foresight of that for when I'm gone, uh, I will have a hard drive full of everything that I've done that they, that they can go back and watch the kids can go back and watch if they want to, or the grandkids can go back and watch if they want to. Exactly. There will be generations, uh, just like earlier today where you're talking about how you miss your grandpa, um, mm -hmm. uh, your grandkids can show their kids kids or however long down the line be like this is what great great grandpa jeremy was about right and they've got this whole fucking discography of being like well here's an interview where he talks about his childhood and here's this where he talks about this and here's this where he talks about football and right they get to know you without ever getting to know you the question is um will the media hold up you know what you know what will be the conversion for what we do here to into the future you know that's something to consider too but i don't know it'd be interesting to see which I, we if won't ever see but i won't ever see it but you know if i've learned anything from the internet is that the internet does not let anything die. It's all there somewhere. So even when the format changes from Spotify or whatever, it'll still be out there. Right. Just ask uh, Paris Hilton. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But all yeah, right, last so, yeah, that's what I did. I've 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 my legacy is on a freaking hard drive, but um uh I have never felt I've never felt like I wasn't successful. I mean, we talked about it early on, you know, we're always going to want more. But if I stop and look backwards and look in the rear view, uh, I can be very um, happy and impressed with the things that we've achieved to this point. Yeah. And like, just to think about, uh, to, to stay on that note, think about this. And it's a somber note, but a because you are a creative human being, um, you lost a friend with Donnie, uh -huh. but at any given time that you want to hear, have a conversation with your friend, you have media that exists because of your will to create Yep, that you can go back to and hear his voice again. Yep. Absolutely.
or and, I can or I can watch videos that I've shot or yeah. I can listen to uh yeah listen to the CDs or listen to the you know the radio show or go back and watch our performances you know as a band and stuff like that so I have that you know yeah. definitely and that's just all because that you have a will to create you're a modern day caveman painting on the fucking walls <laughs> A little easier to figure out this way than some of those old cave paintings, though. Yep, yep, exactly. So last <laughs> last question for you is, do you have a question for me? Oh, shit. You've been asked 21 questions. You can ask a question. See, I went back and, and, went back and I didn't make it all the way through the Rocker Chicks interview today because uh, I ran out of time. I forgot that the, we, you ended it the same way. Mm-hmm. Uh, she grilled me about getting oh, married. Okay, I got one for you. Are you ready? Yep. Do you regret shutting down Team Tejas and leaving the podcast of the United States Paranormal? Uh, that that's, even, that's even, a, <laughs> even though you came back. That's listen. I, I and I've said it before. I never really completely left. It's true because I never stopped talking to you or uh, talking to Esteban or working or thinking of ideas, but. Um, it's not something that we've really touched on on the show at all, but it's a testament to kind of something like we talked about earlier, just because it, just because three guys are making you laugh consistently and uh, seem like they're having a great time does not mean that as soon as that microphone turns off that it is all uh sunflowers and holding hands you know <laughs> it's not all rainbows and unicorns yeah no because it's it's three people three different schedules everybody dealing with their own problems and uh especially when you get people with strong ideals all in the same room albeit right ideas wrong ideas depending on your interpretation uh heads butt and then it makes something that is fun not fun right and sometimes you got to know when to pull the ripcord. Um, people, we joke about all the time about how uh, Daltober liked to put me in an early grave. Like I talk about it all the time. Uh, it's just because there was a lot going on in the background that just had to legitimately just do with my team. And uh, there's things I wish I would have done better. There's things I wish other people would have done better because I had a blast doing it when it was good. Right. It's just like when uh, when you're laying in bed at night and you're fucking just like so mad at somebody or like you're you're like, why can't I do this this way? Or how can I convince somebody to fold on this to do this? Like sometimes you got to bow out. And so like, yeah, I do regret it. And then I don't regret it for like my mental stability, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and then things have like, uh, things of course corrected in some of the aspects, like, uh, for a long time there, like I won't go into specifics, but I didn't talk to Brandon for a very long time. Right. I just, I was talking to him today. I was talking to him today about karaoke cause he runs karaoke at a bar and I was asking some technical questions and we're fine. He came to my birthday and stuff like that but it's just like i just completely think that there are some people that are can work together fantastically and there's some people that should never work together mm -hmm. and there's only one way to find out and that oh, is yeah. to, by doing it and unfortunately yeah. you know sometimes you get a little farther in than you probably should have <laughs> it is what it is uh, well i think that kind of covers it i mean yeah we could get into a lot of detail, but we we need not to get into a lot yeah. of detail. And some friendships need to be left of friendships. You know, you hear these tales of people that were best friends all their life, and then they decide to open a fucking restaurant to each, with each other, and right. then they fucking hate each other, and they're suing each other. Yeah, and so, and, so. The, and the same can go for you know you have uh, uh, friends, and you know you decide to travel together and go you know go do a couple things, but you somewhere along the lines. Uh, butt heads on something and you don't talk to each other for five years after that you know yeah uh, crazy shit happens like that you just don't travel well together you know you gotta you don't know until you know and, and we know from media that like just because people have great chemistry on the mic or on the screen does not mean that that necessarily is all the time right. what was it dirty dancing 
uh, is a known fact that both the leads in that movie fucking hated each other. Really? Yeah. I guess I didn't know that. Yeah, they fucking despised each other on set. That's but funny. on the on the screen, it's one of like the greatest love stories and people love it and everything. Right. But you know, it it just I mean the boys have great on the mic chemistry. It's from years of us harassing each other. Right. But all friend groups harass each other and every now and then somebody gets a feeling tweaked, you know, somebody uh-huh. goes a little too far. Somebody gets hurt feelings or holds on to hurt feelings for too long. And then eventually they throw it on table and people are like, we've been doing this forever. You never said nothing like, yeah, but it's been pissing me off the whole time. Right. Right. So it's just humans, man. You know, <laughs> we're excited. We're excitable yeah. that way. Yeah, we are an excitable bunch. We are the worst things on this planet <laughs> by a long shot. <laughs> I would love to, I would love to uh, sit down with the boys like, sometime and just like do another episode right just for not not to be like get back into it just just to do like a one-off and just be like here it is because i'm sure we can do it there's no doubt in my mind oh absolutely i i I don't want to do it full time yeah no yeah (laughs) no no uh it's a lot let me tell you yeah it's a lot all right so that's the last question huh that's it. That All was right. the, you got one more question than the rocker chick did, and I think we did a little few segues in there with questions on top of questions. Oh, I think questions on top of questions, and uh, we're like over two hours now. So of course, but we knew this was going to happen. <laughs> we called this shot from we were we Babe Ruth that shit. We that were fucking true. pointed out a home field. Absolutely. Long you, from the start. You all knew it. You all knew it. <laughs> it is what it is. If you've gotten this far into two sop and didn't know that me and Jeremy can talk for hours, hours, you ain't listening. <laughs> that was the longest banter ever. <laughs> yeah. But people learn things and that's what this whole point is. So. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely Hopefully you guys learned something new about me this time around too. I think we got some few new things in there. Right on. We're just slowly building like stepping stones for the future generations to piece together Jeremy's whole fucking life throughout oh my, all of his media. Oh my media. goodness! Hey, I've done some things. I've done some things, and uh, I'm pretty proud of uh, where I stand today. I mean, you know, I always want more. I'll always be striving for more because, you know, like Logan said, that's my creative, my creative side. I mean, never stops thinking about creating and how to create. Um, you know, I have done it all. I've recorded nine albums. I've done pa- countless image radio, uh, internet radio station, uh, internet, internet radio shows. I've done over 300 podcasts. Uh, I played the big stages. I played the small stages. Now you need to write a fucking, you got a few more things you gotta do. You gotta write a fucking book. Yeah. You know, get that down to some point. Yeah, yep. cover all the media, dog. I know it's it, well. Actually, I've already started writing one, but I just haven't finished it. Well, there you go. You yeah. just got to write your book, and then you know, and then it circles back around to putting the book on audio format. And there you go, just a fucking. There circle you go. It's a circle. It's it's the circle of life. Life is like a circle. I want an egot. <laughs> what the hell is an egot? That's an an egot. An e. It's an Emmy, a Grammy, an Oscar, and a Tony. Jesus. It's an EGOT. There's only so many people that actually have all of those. I think John Legend is one that has an EGOT now. I think he's the latest. Wow. I'll never get it. Was... I'll never get it. I'll get a. I'll get the. Uh, ge- I'll get the Dollar General version of it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe someday. All right, man. Yeah. Get us out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to do the plugs uh, because the plugs are done for me. They're pre-recorded, but True. absolutely go check out the merch sites at the United States of Paranormal dot com. Send a little love. Yeah, get some shirts, get uh, some glasses, you know, just uh, rep the brand, dog. I know I rep the brand. I'm a big brand guy uh, as far as like podcast and creators. I always buy. I always buy a little bit of everything. I buy, I have way too many shirts. I don't wear enough shirts to justify <laughs> how many I have. Right. Um, check out the, uh, well, I mean, I'm doing plugs. So I don't need to do plugs. You don't need to do plugs. Listen to Jeremy do plugs in a little bit. <laughs> but uh, just uh, if you guys want to have any questions for the main two SOP cast, or uh, if you want to shoot one to the other side, just email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com. Uh, somebody will respond to you. It's true. It will absolutely happen. Probably quicker than you would think. 
Um, ba, ba, ba. What else do we got going on here? Um, April's coming up. When April comes up, we will be launching the Patreon. On cool. that's that's still set for April first, right? Yeah, as of right now, yes, April first. April first, Patreon's right now, gonna be live. Right now, it's tax season. I'm working on the taxes, and then I'll finish up the Patreon, and uh, we will get that uh, up and ready to go. So that will have a bunch of bonus content in it, video content, and all that jazz. All that jazz. And uh, I think that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, You're not new to the other side if you're listening, so you know Mm -hmm. that there is no reason to fear what comes after life. Because it's just me and Jeremy waiting for you on the other side. We'll catch you later. Keep it spooky. So keep it spooky. <laughs> we'll see y'all later. Later. Done. To support other Golden Mojo Entertainment Productions, check out Golden Image Podcast, The Call Guys, and Murd Nerds wherever you enjoy listening to podcasts. To see photos and find new episodes of the United States of Paranormal, follow us on our social media, Twitter at T-U-S-O-P-P-O-D or Instagram at the United States of Paranormal and Facebook, the United States of Paranormal. If you have a place that you'd like us to look into or would like to share your spooky story that we can read on the air, please email us at the United States of Paranormal at gmail.com.